Hey guys, welcome to another video. My name is Tom and today I want to talk about the perfect pitch and how I write music video or commercial treatments. Because in my opinion this is a topic that gets too often overlooked, especially in this low budget filmmaking range a lot of you are probably working right now. So being able to write a good treatment for any kind of filmmaking job will definitely have a huge impact on your filmmaking career. So without further ado, let's just get into it. So today's video will definitely be just something like a crash course on writing treatments and not so much a masterclass. So take everything I talk about with a grain of salt because this is just what I've learned over the last few years in my filmmaking career and what got me from shooting one-man band music videos for local artists to writing actual treatments for real commercial productions. But before we get into it, let's just get a brief look on the key topics we want to talk about today. So what is a treatment? Why a treatment is important to win a job? How to actually start writing a treatment? Why story is God? The structure and the layout of a treatment and what else you need to know. But now let's clarify what exactly is a treatment. So a treatment and this uh, definition, I came up with it myself. Uh, a treatment is an in-depth concept defining all relevant aspects of production and giving general overview of what will be in the end product. There are two really important things in this sentence that define what a treatment needs to be and what a treatment should talk about. So the first one is that it defines all relevant aspects of production. So a treatment, and this is really important, a treatment don't only talks about what the story is or what the content is, but a treatment also talks about what's the intention, how you want to do what you're planning to do, what are the technical aspects you need to think about beforehand. So everything you think about while coming up with the concept for the video whether it's a music video or commercial or anything else all those things should go into your treatment and the second important thing about treatments is that they give a general overview of what will be the end product so essentially if somebody reads your treatment whether it's you whether it's the client or some of your crew members after reading it they should know exactly what you want to do. In the best case, they should have the same images in their head as you had when you came up with the concept and wrote the treatment. So these things, these two aspects are really important to keep in mind while writing treatments. And as you can see, I included a example treatment of a music video I recently shot. These are just the first two pages but you already see that there is some, some sort of coherent style and already within these first four pages you get a sense of what we will be creating. And this is why this music video treatment actually got made and the music video is pretty great. I hope it will come out soon because I'm really proud of it. But yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. So always remember Treatment should define all relevant aspects of production and give an overview of the end product. This is just really important. Now let's get to the next part. Why is it important to write a treatment to win a job? Well, well there are a lot of aspects to that, but these are the four main ones I I felt um, after writing a lot of treatments over the last few years and the thing is that I actually started pretty early writing treatments and they were definitely not as good as they are when I write them right now because I developed a really good workflow to write really efficient and really good treatments without spending like a week on one of them. But even after I just started writing them and they were just a few pages and didn't include everything, I already felt 
the positive impact they had on my filmmaking career and on the jobs I got. So the first important thing is that writing a treatment makes you elaborate your initial idea. So this means in general, if you're like approached to make a music video, you most of the time you get the song and the artist maybe tells you that they had something like this and that in mind and then you're left alone and you have to come up with a concept what you want to do. So now there are two ways to go. You could listen to the song like a hundred times, come up with an idea and just simply call the artist or the brand or anyone and tell them your idea and maybe they like it from what you say and they agree on making it and then you go into production or you write a treatment and what a treatment does is it makes you go through your idea again and again and this leads to you just really getting to the core of the idea and making it better and better and learning before actually going into the production or the shooting you already learn what does work and what doesn't and maybe where your idea or your concept just needs a little bit more work and where something is just missing to make it work so for me the most important thing is writing a treatment is essentially you writing it's like a story and going over it again and again oftentimes makes it better than the first initial thought you had because what i often learn when i'm writing treatments is that the first idea i have is often pretty good but it's not really great and it just takes some work and some time but writing it down and defining the aspects of how you want to make it and what are the meanings and the intentions and what are the technical things behind it make you just just by that you just are forced to make it better and this actually leads into the next point which is that writing a treatment is a great tool to form a simple idea into a functioning concept because most of the time when you get that inspirational spark from listening to a new song or something like that you have like a few images but they are often not a fully functioning concept for a video it's more like yeah it's it's just an inspirational spark and some images and some feelings and moods that you just feel connected to but you definitely have to build on top of that you can not just go into a production with just a few random images and something like yeah i want to shoot the artist um, in front of a i don't know in front of a grain field or something like that it's just that's not how it works you have to go through your idea again and again and turn it into something that will work like a music video is often three to four minutes long and you can't just come up with three settings and say i want to shoot the artist in front of a black a blue and a pink background and that's it there has to be some some kind of thought behind all of this and that's why i really love writing treatments because I'm just simply forced to focus on what it is that I want to do and why I want to do it and what I want the viewers to feel and feel connected to and there are often ways to make this initial idea way better and the treatment is just a good way to force you to do that. The next point is also really important a treatment gives the client and the crew or essentially anyone involved in the production an overview on everything on the end product on the process how to get to the end product on everything they need to know and this is really great and definitely shouldn't be overlooked because that way when you write the treatment and you include everything that is important about the project there won't be any misunderstandings like i had projects where we just agreed on the on the phone about an idea that we wanted to shoot and the client and i 
got into production, the day of the shooting came and it happened to be that we both just had really different ideas of what would be the end product. Just because we only talked about it and there wasn't something written and there weren't any real detailed mood boards and references and anything. Just you need all this stuff to really agree on the same idea. Otherwise you just risk to have problems during production because there are misunderstandings, miscommunication and in the end somebody will be disappointed. It will be either you or it will be the client. And either way, it will be bad. And the last point is for all of you low budget, one man band shooters out there, writing a treatment definitely sets you apart by establishing a professional workflow. Because as I said before, by writing a treatment, you already give the client before the production a sense or essentially not a sense, but a real good idea of what you want to do, how you want to do it, which shows that you are actually capable of doing it, or at least you have an idea of what you need to do, and how the end product will look and feel. And this will essentially give the client a good feeling going into production. This is really important if you're working with a new client that maybe just loved what you did before, but they never worked with you, so their trust is not 100% which is totally normal. But if you give them a real fleshed out treatment, they can go into production really relaxed and they know they can trust you. They know they can lean back and you can do your job without having to go back and forth with them just because there's something you didn't talk about before and they didn't know or you maybe talked about it but they had a different idea about it. So by writing a treatment, everything, the whole production process will be more easy, relaxed and streamlined. Okay, so let's get into the next point, which is how to start writing a treatment. So there's definitely no right or wrong. Like you can essentially write a treatment however you want. And there's, I think there's no real specific form on how a treatment should be, because I know people who just write simple PDFs with a few images and mood boards. And there are other people who like have subdomains on their website where for every treatment they create a private website where the treatment is essentially because that way they can include autoplay music and autoplay videos and stuff like that, which is also a really good way to set yourself apart from the rest. So. Definitely be creative with the treatments, but that's just one, not what we want to talk about today. The first thing I want to talk about this, and yeah, it already uh, has the word. Because the most important thing is that the idea always comes first. So don't necessarily start writing a treatment and sit down before you have any idea of what you want to do. Because that way you are forcing yourself into the creativity and at least for me that doesn't always work. I found that if I just give myself enough time there will be some initial creative spark and you definitely need that initial spark to build on top of that. So if it hasn't come yet just maybe wait a few more hours, a few more days if you have that time. Listen to the song again and again Maybe just watch some videos or some film and something like that and just just look for that inspiration. But don't just sit down with like a blank page in pages and try to come up with something forcefully. At least for me that doesn't really work. But if you have that initial idea, the next point definitely is the research and development. So let's say You've listened to the song 20 times. You have just one specific image that you connect with the song and the mood of the song or the theme of the lyrics. And maybe it's a photograph of a woman sitting on a chair in the sundown on a field. Let's just go with that. 
Okay, so the next point would be that you make some research and you develop a concept around that. So what do you want to do? If it's a music video, should that woman be the artist? Should it be an actor? Should there be a real story around all of that? This is all something that I like to at least kind of come up with before I actually write it, because it just makes it easier. And now with the research and the development, of course, comes the collecting of inspirational material, which means you want to collect images. You also want to collect reference videos because it's, at least in my opinion and in my experience, really important to not just show the artist like images or screen craps of other films, but if you have like for a music video, if you have another music video or a short film or just any sort of moving image that captures the mood and tone or any aspect of the end product you want to make, then show it to the client because that way they will definitely get a better idea of what you want to do. So collect as much inspirational material as possible and during the writing process, when your idea gets more fleshed out, you will definitely put some of the material away because you feel like it doesn't really fit. But make sure that you don't just copy an idea of another video or even a photograph. Like, you can take inspiration from something and you can take certain aspects from other people's work, but try to not only copy stuff that's already out there. It's not that hard to create something new when you get inspired by just different things because you can take aspects from all these different things and make it into something new. But yeah, just don't, don't copy. Now, after I collected enough inspirational material, I oftentimes create just a mood board first to give even myself just a sense of what the feeling of the piece will be like what are the colors I'm going for, what is the tonality, just, just anything to get it out of my head onto the screen so I can actually look at something. And in the end, it's just important to start somewhere because you can think it through more and more every time. Maybe it's just if you have an idea, just collect some, some inspirational material and then just sit down and start putting it together. So if you already had that creative spark, there's probably something coming out of just piecing it together and following the idea to where it goes. And here's just a quick glance at the Pinterest mood board for the Galaxies and Haze music video treatment I showed you in the beginning. As you can see, those are all not film screen grabs, but more like photographs and these just look like 3D concept art and stuff like that. It's more stuff to to give me a sense of the feeling and not so much of actual frame references or shot references because you don't want to stick too much to to some some frame or shot early on when you when you develop such an idea and such a concept so it's really beneficial to not, not look so much into film references and more like visual references in general. And following that thought, when I look for video references, I try to not go into the same category as the project is I'm working on right now. Like if I do a music video and I write a treatment for that, I try not to look into other music videos for reference, just because I feel like it's too easy to get lost in copying other people's stuff. Whereas if I go into commercials or animation or short films in general and look into other styles and other categories, 
There's often something you can take away from it without taking the whole piece. And this can really benefit your end product. Like, like earlier this year, I created a treatment for a sports commercial and I just try to not look too much into other sports commercials just because it's, it gets repetitive pretty easy and you see a lot of stuff is done the same and if you just look a little bit outside the box, there's probably something interesting you can find and you can bring into that project you're working on. So always look outside the box and try not to copy. So next I want to talk to you about story and why story is God. So here's a quick example. I recently made a music video for an artist and we connected and had a phone call and uh, talked about uh, the artist wanted to do just a performance video, three different setups and that's it or initially those were just two setups and I suggested to add another setup and then I suggested to add just a small storyline so the story is just that someone is stuck in the desert or lost in the desert and searching for a way out somehow and he has illusions and illusions of water that's the whole story um, and we did it as I suggested and this is what made the video work. Without this little layer of a storyline, the whole video would be pretty pointless or there wouldn't be so much to keep the viewer engaged in, in what's going on just because there's nothing going on. So by adding a little storyline, even if it's just the tiniest storyline, your video will probably be a lot better. So this is something to really keep in mind. If you can add something besides performance or besides products, like if, if you're working in a music video, the product shot is essentially the artist performing. And if you're working in a commercial, it's just the product showing off the product. But if there's something besides that, that keeps the viewers engaged and triggers them emotionally somehow, then you win. Then this is what makes a great video, essentially. But in this regard, it's also really important to stay within your limits. Like, don't write a storyline that requires like really professional actors to play it out if you don't have access to actors. Like, keep it simple and keep it to something maybe even a non-professional can do. Don't write the emotions that are required too complex and yeah just be real stay within your limits and write stuff you can actually pull off don't go for crazy locations that you don't have access to crazy technical things you don't have access to or don't even know how to handle just keep it real keep it simple oftentimes the simplest idea as with the man in the desert are pretty much the ones that work best because they don't require a lot of stuff and they are just really simple and yeah, that's for that. Okay, now that we've talked about the content of a treatment, let's talk about the structure a little bit. Because it's not just about what's in it, but also how you present it. And before we get into the design, I want to tell you a few structural aspects you should keep in mind while writing a treatment. And the first one is to utilize your front page. Because you have to keep in mind the front page is the first thing the reader will see. And if your front page sucks, your whole treatment sucks and you've lost within three seconds. But that doesn't mean you have to make a super flashy and super crazy front page. Just keep it simple, but make it somehow interesting and appealing. Like for this video, the front page is like really minimalistic. It's just a kind of abstract photograph and the font on top of it but it's just it looks good and it's kind of mysterious you don't know what it is especially together with the title of the song um, which is Fata Morgana it's like it, it really worked so keep it simple 
but utilize your front page to get the viewer's interest. And also, when you start writing the treatment, start big and then go into the details. Like, first of all, you really need to write down, as you can see here, what is it that you want to create? Is it a music video? Then you write down it's a music video for artist XYZ for this and that song. The song is the first singer from the next album or something like that. And you want to say what this music video should do for the artist. What's, what's the purpose of it? And then you go into the story. You write down exactly what you want to happen during the music videos. And don't just write like there will be performance shots and stuff like that. Write down how they should look. What are these shots? What are the settings? What's the lighting? What's the overall mood? What are the colors? Everything you have in mind, write it down. It's just, it makes it all way easier in the end. And after you wrote down the content of the music video, you talk about how you want to make it. You talk about technical aspects, you talk about references, you show more mood references, mood boards, reference films. Maybe if you already have some crew on hand, maybe just introduce the crew already. Like if you're a director, you can write down which DP you want to work with or which music you want to use, if it's a commercial, something like that. Everything, as I said before, everything you have in mind, you can add into the treatment. This will make it much easier for the reader to understand what you want to do. Because, and this is the next important thing, nothing is unnecessary. As I said before, everything that you are thinking of while coming up with this idea is also important for the reader. They should know exactly what's going on in your head, what you want to create. And if you leave out certain details, they just can't understand the whole picture. And last but not least, always give examples. Don't think that the reader, which is oftentimes someone not working in the creative and visual industry, and therefore their eye and mind is not so trained in like imagining some things that are written down. Like if I read something, I can easily get get an idea of what the person would would want it to look like in the end but someone who doesn't do this all the time maybe just can't do this so always include examples for everything reference videos reference images even reference music if it's a commercial you can add like mute tunes and something like that you can also if it's a short film cut together a mood reel which is like shots from other work or images. You cut it together to music that creates the mood you want to, you want to create with the piece and you essentially create like a little teaser or trailer with, with other people's footage to, to give kind of a sense of the overall tonality. Keep in mind to always give details for everything and just write down as much as you can. Okay, and the next important thing, which is maybe even the most important thing about all of this, is the layout. You definitely have to make your treatment appealing to the reader. You don't have to go overboard with effects and, I don't know, crazy stuff. But don't just write it down on a blank page and, I don't know, put, put a headline on top of it and call it a day. Definitely invest some time to, to really design the thing and give it some some special look that already creates the mood of the end product because if you don't invest that time your idea can essentially be as good as it gets because if you're not able to present it in an appealing way the reader will automatically be turned off even just a little bit so your great idea gets degraded down to like a mediocre idea just because your treatment doesn't look as good as it could. And while designing your treatment, keep in mind that form follows function. So whatever you do, make sure that it somehow benefits the overall look and the mood you want to create with it. Like for instance, these are the first pages of a short film treatment for a experimental short film I did earlier this year. The link is down in the description below. My body is a cage. 
And as you can see, compared to the other treatment I showed you before, which is kind of like widescreen mode, this is more like 5x4 format because the final piece was supposed to be in a 5x4 format. So this was just an easy way to already create this kind of compressed look, which kind of forces our character into a defined room. And it's just an easy, easy way to already play with the layout and the format. And these are things you can do all the time. Like try to come up with creative ways how you can already introduce the final look and feel into the treatment. Therefore, of course, you can also create color themes. Like in this, you see it's like pretty dark and there are those golden accents, which are in the final piece as well. And this is stuff you can do all the time. If your film or your final end product is supposed to be like really colorful and all over the place, go for it, make your treatment the same way. But if not, try to find like a color theme that works and that reflects the mood and setting of the final piece. Because as I said before, you want this to be like an, a really compelling piece of art in itself. And it should provoke the same emotional triggers and feelings as the end product itself. So definitely don't underrate design and layout. Take your time and just make it as appealing as possible. And last but not least, what else to know? First important thing is discuss the payment beforehand. Like if you're working in this low budget project range, you probably have to create the treatment for free just because there's no budget for this. But it's definitely still worth it to invest your own time in the beginning and write some treatments. As I said before, because they will definitely make your projects in general better because your ideas will get better and they will get more developed and fleshed out. But it doesn't hurt to ask if there are a few bucks for an extra day in pre-production. Just make sure to clarify it beforehand so that there are no misunderstandings in the end because those will always make somebody feel weird. Also pretty important, try to follow the concept throughout the entire production. This means that if you get home from the shooting day and you have all your footage loaded in, make sure to at least try to edit it like it was supposed to be edited because there's a good chance that your idea that you spend a lot of time developing was really good and is maybe better than the impulse reaction you get after you come home shooting and you like have your favorite shots that weren't supposed to be in the film because you didn't write them in the treatment but there was a good moment on set and you have this crazy shot and now you want to form the whole piece around that shot. It's definitely always a good idea to come home after the shooting and maybe just read the treatment again. Read what it was all about, what you wanted to do, just to have that in mind, even if you change something in the end. Because it's also really important to be open for change. Like filmmaking is a really creative process, and especially if you develop an idea just on the page, it will probably look a lot different when it's actually shot. So there's also a good chance that there's just a better way to put it all together than you thought in the beginning. But yeah, it's a good balance between sticking to the concept and being open for new stuff. But the last important thing is definitely for everyone, keep all your treatments. Even those you maybe wrote because of no project, just because you had a good idea, and even those that were rejected by a client, keep them because maybe you can use them on a later point. This has often happened to me that I have kind of recycled ideas that I had before, didn't work out, maybe worked out for another project. And it's always good to have them just on your hard drive so you can go through them. Maybe you remember a certain aspect from a treatment you wrote like years ago and you can take that and include that on a new project and maybe it makes the whole thing a lot better. Like this is a really important thing, keep your treatments, keep them organized and just don't forget the ideas you maybe had before. So that's it guys, that's all I wanted to talk about in this little crash course on writing treatments for music videos and commercials. 
I hope you guys found this video helpful. I really want to turn this into some kind of series where I talk about like those more theoretical aspects of film pre-production, production, post-production, post like things you don't always hear on YouTube because it's all about camera reviews and lighting tutorials, which is also really great. But I think those soft skills are also really important. And as I said before, this is what gets you from being like an amateur to like a professional. If you can send your client a written treatment, 15 pages, and the client after reading it has a real idea of what you're about to do. This will give them a good feeling. This will make your life much easier and it will make the end product probably a lot better. So guys, if you have any further questions, make sure to leave a comment below. Leave a thumbs up if you liked the video and I hope to see you guys in the next one.